Good afternoon, everybody. Hey. Um, my name is Mark, but most people refer to me as Mr. C, and I'm here to talk to you today about teaching tech foo, or what we should be talking to kids about the digital dark arts at school. So the first thing I'd like to show you is a quote from one of my favorite books. The dark arts are many, varied, ever-changing, and eternal. Fighting them is like fighting a many-headed monster, which each time a neck is severed sprouts a head even fiercer and cleverer than before. You are fighting that which is unfixed, mutating, indestructible. Your defences must therefore be as flexible and inventive as the arts which you seek to undo. Not my wisdom, Severus Snape's wisdom, but still wisdom nonetheless. What he was trying to say there is, even though he's talking about black wizards, we kind of think about hackers in the same way at the moment. All of the dark wizards in Harry Potter, Voldemort, doesn't get spoken about. They refuse to talk about it, they won't teach kids about the dark parts of what they're doing until it all goes pear-shaped and we really need some people to be able to protect ourselves, at which point we struggle and we run and we get all the kids learning how to protect themselves from all these black wizards out there that can do voodoo to us that we've never seen before because nobody told us it existed. We're currently hiding knowledge about the reality of the digital world from the kids who live in it and it doesn't make any sense. There's a tendency towards hiding knowledge from kids that's deemed unsuitable for them to know. It's happened for a very long time. But it's something we need to start stopping because we're finding a lot more problems in the digital realm than we have before. A lot more people are getting on, teaching themselves how to do things, which is something we'll talk about in a minute, with no sense of the responsibility that that power entails. The ethos of hiding information is totally counter to the concepts underpinning our modern education system, which is transparency, honesty, and the rewarding of curiosity. At the moment, when kids come and ask questions about how do I do this thing, we tell them, don't ask that question, don't know how to do that. It's not any of your business how to do those things. Why would you want to know how to do that in the first place? Which is backwards. Students need to be exposed to authentic information if we're teaching properly. Otherwise, we're teaching them untruths or we are hiding the facts from them. It's not our job. The fact is most people in positions of power in education and government don't actually understand the importance of the information they're telling us to blacklist and not tell kids about. They don't get the things they're telling us not to talk about. And very often when a teacher is asked a question, about something they think they shouldn't be talking about, they get flustered and embarrassed and say, oh, I can't tell you, I'm not allowed to talk about those things. That's not what teachers are about, that's not who we are, that's not what we do. We're here, when a kid asks you a question, your job is to answer that question. And if you don't know, you don't say, I don't know, you say, well, let's go find out. We can still teach kids about apartheid without creating a generation of racists. We can teach kids about karate without making a, a generation of violent bullies. We can teach people to protect themselves digitally and online without making a generation of black hat hackers who are here to steal all the money from your bank account. According to the Home Office in their Prevent Guide, having specialist knowledge and skills in IT and communications can be a gateway to potential law breaking. So can carrying a stick. The guide which is intended to help police and local authorities spot people who are at risk for becoming criminals in the future, or who might be criminals now that we don't know about, states that those who have undertaken formal IT training or even those who have taught themselves could have skills to commit serious offences. Yeah? There's a lot of other stuff that you teach kids at school that can allow them to create serious offences. Been to a woodwork class, there's a lot of sharp stuff in there, quite easy to kill somebody with a big hammer but we don't find the need to talk to kids about that because that seems to be obvious. Early behaviours, of early criminal behaviour could include modifications to games or software and sharing things online. I know about 50 eight-year-olds that are now on the track to become cybercriminals. <laughs> do your kids play Minecraft? Do they write their own mods? Do they write their own servers? Do they do anything inside games that adapts the way it works? They're on the track to being criminals according to the Home Office. Do they have a Scratch account? Because then they're sharing stuff online. Cyber criminals. So if you don't know, make sure you look under your kid's bed because they might secretly be part of a terrorist plot that you're unaware of. Uh, just check. Make sure you're looking in through their Minecraft accounts. They're not plotting to overthrow the government. We're getting a lot of crossed wires and mixed messages as teachers. I'm not sure if there are any other teachers here, but I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about, even if you've got parents, also if you have parents of kids at school. The DOV says high quality computing education equips pupils to use computational thinking and creativity to understand and change the world. Yep, all positive so far. Building on this knowledge and understanding, pupils are equipped to use information technology to create programs, systems and a range of content. Yep. Computing also ensures pupils become digitally literate. 
very important. When you consider everything around you is technology now. You do your shopping online, your groceries are done through technology. Plane tickets, technology. What's on at the movies? Technology. Everything is technology, the way we communicate on a daily basis. Kids need to be able to use and express themselves and develop their ideas through information and communication technology. It makes you far more powerful. It's why we invented computers in the first place, to do the heavy lifting. It allows, frees you up to use your creativity while the computer crunches the hard numbers. We want our kids at a level suitable for the future workplace and as active participants in a digital world. Active participants, being able to change the world around you makes you an active participant, otherwise you are passive. While the curriculum aims to teach students how to use it safely, respectfully, responsibly and securely, it only really talks about issues online like avoiding bullying and watching out for stalkers and groomers on the internet. It doesn't talk about the rights and wrongs of being a digital citizen. It doesn't talk about the ethics of being good on the internet or how we're supposed to behave in this enormous social sphere. If your kid has a phone in his pocket, he is connected to everybody in the world 24 hours a day. Good guys and bad guys. Think about that for a minute. Everyone in the world is connected to your child through that little thing in their hip pocket. If they don't know how to use it, if they don't know how to look after themselves in this huge sphere filled with anonymous people, there could be some serious repercussions. We don't even talk to kids about why it's not a good idea to hack into a military network. Right? We tell them that there's this digital voodoo that exists, people can do it, we see it on the news, these guys broke into HB Gary, they broke into bank accounts, they stole all this stuff. Why? Because nobody ever sat them down and said, yeah, you can do these things, but you probably shouldn't because nobody talked to them about it. Most of these people are self-taught. They were interested. They went and found out and thought, wow, I've got these big digital muscles. Let's watch me flex them. The same thing that bullies do. Exactly the same thing. An old German proverb states that fear makes the wolf bigger than he is. In Harry Potter, Voldemort used fear and the shadows to increase his influence over the ignorant, people who didn't understand who and what he was and the true extent of his power. He used the shadows to increase the general fear in the populace, engendering him more dominion over all the people who were afraid to even speak his name. By allowing hackers to remain these nebulous ninjas in the darkened wings of the web, we are increasing that power for them. If we won't talk about it, if we don't tell people what's happening, if we don't tell them that these things might happen to you one day if you don't watch your back, they're not going to see it coming. They're not going to know how to protect themselves from it. And these guys are going to run rampant. We need to educate everyday users on the use of the internet. Everyday users, we are all everyday users of the internet and half of us don't even know how it's put together. We don't know the nuts and bolts of the machine. You don't really understand what the thing in your pocket is connecting you to or what you can do with it or what people can do to you through it. We need to teach kids tech foo. We need to teach them how to protect themselves from digital bullies. We're not doing it. We're not even talking about the fact that this bullying exists. The skills required to do some of these things which we consider black magic are so basic that a seven-year-old can do it in less than 10 minutes. This is Betsy Davies. <laughs> uh, she's a seven-year-old hacker. If you're in a cafe like this um, using the Wi-Fi, your data between your phone or your computer can quite easily be intercepted. And it's all readable. It's all in plain text. Your passwords, your usernames and that kind of thing. And it can all be scooped up by some unethical hacker sitting in the corner looking to grab your data. So what we wanted to do was create an experiment where we took a seven-year-old and taught her, based using materials found on the internet, how to hack into somebody's uh, connection uh, in one of these Wi-Fi hotspots, really to demonstrate how simple it is to do. I found lots of just like numbers and like signs just all together which really don't quite make sense but then when you go get into it you'll get it and it'll like it'll come clear to you. Betsy set up her computer to pretend to be the Wi-Fi hotspot as it were in the cafe so when uh, the victim connected um, they actually connected to her computer and it was that way that um, all of their data went through her computer and she was able to see usernames and passwords and that kind of thing. Um, and it's known as a man-in-the-middle attack. I found it quite easy. It's just, I read the instructions and it just came to my mind and I saw all the things. I found Twitter, um, I didn't find Facebook. I found email and Twitter. Seven. Seven years old, less than ten minutes to set up a man-in-the-middle attack in a Starbucks and skim everybody in the room's data. Passwords, usernames, <coughs> credit card numbers, Anything you sent across that network, seven-year-old Betsy now owns your information. And that information that she used to do that 
was built up on a Google search. Simple Google search. Some of the top answers you can get, you search up Google, man in the middle attack, 10 simple steps to setting up a man in the middle attack. All right? If we don't tell kids how to deal with this information or the responsibility that comes along with having this sort of power, what are we setting up? Betsy was seven and she committed an illegal act of digital voodoo. Most people wouldn't have any idea what she was doing or even that it had happened to them. Everything she did is available on a Google search and takes less than 10 minutes. If everyone in the world is able to find this information, who's teaching them the right way to use it? Who's showing them what they should be doing with this knowledge? When we teach kids Kung Fu, when we teach them Karate, the sensei says to them, every lesson, there's a philosophy in there that says, I'm teaching you to do dangerous things. That doesn't mean you get to go out and act dangerously. Every time a kid is taught martial arts, they have that drummed into them. We're not doing that with the digital world, and that is far more far-reaching than the length of my arms and legs. There are kids like Betsy who could do things to people across the world without any of their knowledge. Who are the people on the other end of the keyboard teaching these fledging data travellers what behaviour is right and wrong on the internet? Has anyone in here ever been to 4chan? Those are the people teaching your kids. Been to Reddit? Those people are teaching your kids. Do you know who they are? No. Do you know what their objectives are? No. But they've got all the information in the world and they're willing to feed it to your children. It's obvious to anyone why we don't need to tell woodworking students not to hit each other in the face with a hammer, right? Because we've all been hit, we all understand that. We get the consequences of that action, but people don't really get the consequences of doing things like Betsy does, the man in the middle attack. They don't understand. We see people around the world who are doing these things without realising they're doing anything that's particularly illegal. Or they do and they think, well, the repercussions are not my problem. It's not me that's being affected by this until the FBI, the police, MI6 come knocking on your door saying, what's going on? We wouldn't think it was a great idea to let kids educate themselves about sexual education. Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to tell you about sex, Johnny. Go on Google and ask Google. What results is he going to get? Is it going to be positive? No. Of course it's not. It's going to be sensationalist. It's going to be dark. It's going to be somebody that you don't know giving your kids a bunch of information that you haven't vetted or seen before. Why is this okay with everybody? Why does everybody seem like this is not a problem? It's a bit ridiculous. This is Heidi Partovi. Cool guy. He started Code.org, invented the Hour of Code, he said, any time you teach anything, ethics is part of it. The same is true about driving a car or writing. Journalists get held to ethical standards. It just happens that computer programming is like a superpower. So the incidence of people doing bad things with it is way more noticeable. Someone hacks the federal bank, right? That affects everybody in the country. One kid hacks the federal bank. Everybody in the country can be affected by that. However, in a world where healthcare, commerce, transportation, communication, and entertainment are all run by computers, all of those things are digital. We've got people out there getting black hat knowledge and using it whenever they want, because no one's told them not to do that. We don't teach biology or chemistry to kids because they will become biologists or chemists. We teach them because that is how your world works. We tell them about how light bulbs work. We tell them that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen, not because they need to know that, but because this is the world you live in. This is what actually happens around you all the time. We don't use things like H2O on a daily basis, we know it, but we do use public key encryption every day, and nobody knows how that works. No one in this room, well actually one or two people in this room might know how that works, but most of us don't, and we use it every single day for all sorts of very important things. Hey Bill. What can we do? Like most social norms, it begins at school and at home when children are very young, and I'm talking like five and six. We should be talking about these things. Responsible adults, teachers like me, parents like you, have always had the duty to ensure that their kids are not engaging in unhealthy or criminal activity. Whose responsibility is it to make sure Jimmy isn't breaking into the shop down the road at night? It's mum and dad's. So in order to get this to happen, we need experienced teachers who understand the implications of the content that they are teaching, not just blacklisting it and saying we don't talk about that or I don't know. We need to understand the context of the knowledge outside of the sensationalist and fear-mongering media that we get all the time. Using hackers as a, as a weapon okay, is not the way to go forward about it. We need to discuss these things openly and frankly, not making them blown up to be enormous things. Because we saw before, Betsy is seven. She's one of those notorious hackers you hear about on the news. 
The Department of Education gave computing at schools three million pounds over two years to help schools prepare for the computer science curriculum, which sounds like a lot of money. But it actually works out to be less than 150 pounds per school over that two years. Consider this, an entry-level online seminar with OCR that lasts only two hours, so I Skype with somebody for two hours and they give me the basics on computer science. Costs 80 pounds per teacher. Every school can afford one two-hour session on the internet with somebody. After that, they can buy two Raspberry Pis with no peripherals and then their computing fund is dry. Could we possibly be underestimating the value of investing in the world's information security at the bottom levels? Teachers and parents need to be more openly exposed to the concepts of information security and appropriate conduct, or we have to start using resources which already exist to equip our students. We're already asking a lot of teachers to ask them to go out and learn a whole new discipline on top of everything they already do is ridiculous. I was speaking to a teacher here yesterday who was saying that she only works three days a week, but that's actually four days a week's worth of work because of all the marking, assessment, paperwork, meetings. They don't have time to learn all this stuff, but there are people out there who already know it. Love this quote. If you want to learn to swim, jump into the water. On dry land, no frame of mind is ever going to help you. If you don't understand what you are teaching, then you're just regurgitating information. You're not actually teaching anything. The people who need to be teaching this stuff are the people who know what they are talking about, people who have done it, people who have experience. You wouldn't go and learn how to drive a car from someone who's only ever read a book on doing it. Why is it the same about digital security? At this point, we're trying to hide things that we don't really understand in order to avoid students from falling into the trap of doing the wrong thing with it, which is exactly the opposite of it, what we should be doing. We should be shedding light on all of this stuff. People fear what they don't understand. By not talking about InfoSec, we're increasing the power of the people who do know the answers, the people who will use that information for the wrong thing. It always comes at the risk of someone abusing their power when you teach them anything. Knowledge is power. The more we teach kids, the more they have a risk of abusing that power. You teach them basic chemistry, they could go out and start a fire with the things under the kitchen sink. But you would hopefully be there to talk to them and say that is not the way that you should deal with the knowledge that you've just acquired. Teach them some sort of sensibility about the things that they know and the things that they're doing. We need the right philosophy in forming the teaching of the things that we're putting out. Coders, hackers, programmers, data travelers, web warriors, and most of all technology companies who have the bank role to back this should be taking up the mantle of improving the general level of security on the internet by educating everyone on the risks of not understanding. At the end of the day, it's these corporations that have the most to lose. And we see it in the news all the time. These are the corporations that lose the stuff when people with their black hat skills come out and flex their muscles. Why aren't they doing more to fix it? Don't know. There are some free resources on the internet that we can talk about. The top one up there, Hack This Site, is one that I recommend to most children who come and talk to me about cybersecurity. I want to learn how to do these things. I want to learn how to make a secure, safe network that people can't break into. I want to understand how my VPN works. So I send them to Hack This Site. And their ethos is, we like to consider hacking itself to be a tool, a skill which in itself is neutral, a means without an end. It can be useful for good, for the benefit of all, or bad, mindless destruction or theft. We do not encourage negative use of the information we provide. Sounds like a bit of backside covering. But at the end of the day, that's absolutely the right ethos to have. I can teach you anything you want to know. What you do with that is up to you, but I will also impart to you the responsibility that comes along with the knowledge that I am passing on. And maybe if I don't think that you deserve to have the knowledge or you might use it in the wrong way, then I'll refuse to tell you how to do it. But we need a person in the middle, someone who is vetting all of this stuff, someone who is the go-between for the information and the people who want it. Because at the moment, we can Google up some really dangerous, illegal stuff anytime we like and use it however we want. Evilzone.org, which sounds really bad, but is actually really, really good. They want to openly share hacking and security knowledge as far as that is responsibly possible. They want to provide a communication platform for hackers, security enthusiasts, and other magnificent creatures to safely discuss hacking and security-related topics. And this is the big one. They want to provide tools, training environments, and other necessities to discourage illegal activities in order to gain hands-on experience. What's the best way to learn how to protect a network? Learn how to break one. Understand what people could do to your network before you try and build it so that you could put those safeguards in place. But the only way to learn that information at the moment is to go on and do it to somebody else's network. There's no way really to get on there and do it legally. Hack This Site have built their own site and it's called Hack This Site because you hack their site. You go to the first level, once you can break through that it lets you through to the second level. Once you work out how to break the second level of security, you're through to the third level. 
and it works all the way through their site. It's a purpose-built tool to teach you these illegal skills in a safe and legal way. We need many more resources like this for children. And Cyberary says, as the amount of cyber threats continue to grow, so does the cyber security industry. There is a need for capable ethical hackers, and it is a global need. Ethical hackers, the good guys, penetrate secured systems to highlight flaws and weaknesses in that system. They help government agencies, private businesses, and public organizations identify what they have that is secure and what is not. This is a very vital job today, especially as the digital world is increasing. It's becoming more pervasive. It's taking over more and more of our lives. And we're seeing all of these exploits that exist that people don't know about. There are things on the web now like HackerOne. HackerOne is a bounty program. If you can get onto somebody's website and you can find a way to break into it, you tell HackerOne and they will pay you a cash bounty for doing so. Instead of taking that information, selling it on the black market, selling it on tour somewhere, telling people how they can crack into this bank's website through a back door, you tell the bank and the bank will fix it and they will pay you more money than the black market would have provided. And you save thousands of people in the process from having their bank accounts possibly hacked or destroyed. Hacker House, which is a new initiative that started up very recently in UK, is actually a place for people who want to go and learn cyber security skills from real hackers. Hackers who have had experience in the field, some hackers who are possibly not the nicest guys you've ever met or guys who have used their powers in the wrong way in the past, but they're making up for what they've done. They've just opened the hacker house and you can come in, they will work with you one-on-one -on -one as a tutor and teach you the cybersecurity skills you want to know. They're trying to give back to the community. Guys like Larry Love, who's currently on trial, trying to be extradited to the US for allegedly breaking into some government systems. He's part of Hacker House. You can go learn from him how to protect your network from guys like him. It's about the perfect system that we could come up with. If he's done it before and he's done it to the US government, supposedly, then he can definitely show you how to protect your network. The last thing I want to talk about is Spider-Man. Because he has one of the best quotes in comic book history, and it gets used all the time. And I don't think we actually take it as literally as we should. Because with anything we teach, knowledge is power. Physicality is power in certain instances. And with that power comes the responsibility to use it in the right way. If I was the size of Arnold Schwarzenegger, I could definitely walk out there right now and clock somebody. But why would I? Why is that the right way to go about using that? Why is that the right behavior to sort of inform your knowledge? It's not. It's wrong. It's backwards. And we're not talking to kids about the things they need to be doing instead. They get to go online, take this power for themselves, and use it however they deem fit. No one's teaching them the responsibility of their power. No one's even discussing the responsibility of their power because we're so afraid to even talk about the power they might one day possess that we can't get to that point. I urge all of you to go online at some point and have a look at Hack This Site. Have a go. See what you can get done. Not only is it incredibly interesting, but it's a very valuable tool for you to have in your arsenal. Be able to protect yourself online. Be able to do that tech foo and stop people messing with you or getting into your network, breaking something on your network or stealing your data, your information. You could be the person who was in Starbucks while Betsy was stealing your credit card number. If you don't know that sort of thing can exist, if you don't understand that private or public access points, sorry, are a very easy way into your system, if you've never been told that, then how do you know to protect yourself from any of it, even the most basic threats? The last thing I would like to say before I go is that if your school is currently not talking to your students about what they should be doing online, what proper behavior is when you're online, outside of cyberbullying and watching out for people grooming you and things like that, if they're not talking about the way you should behave as a citizen online, you need to start having a talk to your IT teacher because this is a thing we need in every single school, in every single classroom. We need to tell children that the right way to behave online applies to everybody online. And then maybe we'll start seeing some more powerful white hat people coming out and far less of the black hat hackers. Think about it this way, you teach a kid Kung Fu, yeah, he could go out and hurt somebody, but if we all know a bit of Kung Fu, if everybody in this room can protect themselves to some level or another, then those threats are mitigated for most of us, or at least they're far less dangerous than they were a day ago. If you can look after yourself, then you can help to look after other people. If all of us look after each other, then these guys who are willing to abuse their power, these bullies will go away. Thank you.